mirror on the wall. Who is fairest of them all? When you think about beauty pageants, societal pressure, and physical attractiveness as it relates to women in competition, what comes to mind first? Big hair and lots of makeup? Lose the big hair. This isn't Dallas. Women walking in a straight line wearing high heels with a book placed on top of their heads? Or women being on stage wearing a bathing suit while being judged? And when you hear phrases like, she's a perfect 10 and body measurements such as 36, 24, 36, and even taking it back to our childhood fairy tales with mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Where do you think it all derives from? Well, I'll say that beauty pageants were a major contributing factor. So let's get into it. So a beauty pageant is defined as a competition that has traditionally focused on judging and ranking physical attributes of the contestants. Now, I'm pretty sure that a lot of young girls, women were either in beauty pageants or had a parent to sign them up for one, whether they wanted to be in it or not, <laughs> or at least you thought about it. I mean, if you are into that kind of thing, you know, why not? You get to be a beauty queen, a Barbie doll, and glamorized for the day. You get to play dress up, which was one of my favorite things to do. You get to be a princess for the day, and if you win, you get a crown or a tiara, prize money, and most of all, bragging rights. So where did this fascination with beauty pageants and competitions, the need, the want to be the most beautiful, come from? Well, beauty competitions started as early as Greek mythology with the goddesses Aphrodite, Hera, and Athena competing to be the fairest to win the prize of the golden apple. Men were also judged on their beauty as well. But to bring you more current, the first person noted to take their shot at beauty pageants, or should I say competitions, was circus owner Phineas T. Barnum, other known as P.T. Barnum, from Barnum and Bailey's. In 1854, P.T. Barnum held contests of all sorts, such as the judging of women, flowers, dogs, babies, etc., but he didn't have much success with it. It was looked upon as low society and some even protested. So Barnum eventually changed his strategy from live pageants and had women actually send the pictures in of themselves for judgment. They were called daguerreotypes, a photograph taken by an early photographic process employing an iodine sensitized silver plate and mercury vapor. So if you didn't get all that, it looks something like this. So although the idea was introduced, pageants didn't really pick up until about 60 years later. So fast forward to the 1920s to Atlantic City's Intercity Beauty Contest in 1921, which was designed to attract more tourists over the summertime. The goal was to use the women's bodies or their looks to tempt or to excite people, tourists, to stay longer on the shore even after the summer had ended. It was a business move set forth by businessmen to make more money. So basically, it was noted that about eight women or so were chosen to walk around Atlantic City's boardwalk in bathing suits, smiling and waving while being evaluated, of course to win a prize at the end. Over 100,000 people attended. This pageant went on to be known as the Miss America pageant, crowning its first winner, a 16-year-old Margaret Gorman. Now one would ask, why would a woman want to partake in something like this at this time? Well, you have to consider the time period. This pageant took place shortly after the 19th Amendment, which was officially signed into law on August 26, 1920, granting women the right to vote. So this was during a time when women really didn't have rights or financial strength. So there was a lot of emphasis put on beauty because the more beautiful you were, the more of a chance you would have of attracting a wealthy suitor, which was important because a lot of women didn't have the financial means to take care of themselves. So it kind of made me think about the modern term that we use today, gold digger, or women who prefer dating wealthy men. And besides, Beverly is not a gold digger like those girls were. It kind of makes you wonder where that all started. 
if we come from a history of where women were not given rights to vote or not able to make the same kind of money as men, of course these women felt compelled to rely on their looks and wanted to marry someone that was wealthy. But I digress. That's another story for another time. So back to beauty pageants. So of course, after the success of the Miss America pageant, businessmen saw that they could make money using this system. Money to bring back into the communities, money to invest, etc. So more pageants were formed, such as Miss World in 1951, Miss Universe in 1952, Miss International in 1960, and Miss Earth in 2001. These came to be known as the Big Four, or the most popular. And of course, other countries were starting to create pageants as well. This also caused a plethora of local pageants and state pageants. Welcome to our Halloween pageant. <laughs> the way pageants work is that a community or group of people organize and decide upon the rules and the requirements such as age, clothing standards, etc. If it's a pageant based on academics and you win a scholarship at the end, the pageant may require a certain grade point average upon entering. Also, there can be many local pageants that a contestant may have to enter and win before entering a state pageant. So for example, if you wanted to raise money for a cause or for a community, you can create the Little Miss Donut pageant or the Little Miss Sugar Plum. I'm sure most of us have seen or heard of the movie Little Miss Sunshine. So if you have seen that movie, it kind of works like that. It's also up to this committee or group of organizers to set forth the type of competitions to be held inside of the pageants, such as swimsuit, evening wear, sportswear, and so forth. They also have to set forth rules about the interview portion, the talent portion, and how they will be scored and ranked. Now that we've gone over the history of pageants, let's move to our next segment, stereotypes. Now as humans and as people, we're constantly evolving and growing, or at least we should be. I remember a very pivotal time in my life where I was so afraid of everything. There are so many things that I wanted to accomplish, so many things that I wanted to do, but I would always find myself either starting and not finishing or starting and talking myself out of it. I was so fear driven that I was literally holding myself back or holding myself captive. It was kind of like a self saboteur. I could never just allow myself to reach my full potential and it really started to bother me because I knew if I didn't break the pattern that it was going to continue on and on and on and I knew I just couldn't keep going that way. So one day I decided to to do a pageant. The reason I chose to do a pageant to conquer this is because I knew I would be afraid. It was gonna tackle my stage fright, my shyness, my confidence, being on a stage facing all those people. I knew that if I could do it and get through it, I knew that it was going to be the ultimate test for me. So to make a long story short, I entered into my state pageant just right before the deadline, I met the requirements and I entered. So I wanted to share with you some of my stories so that as we go over stereotypes, I can actually compare it to my personal experience. So here we go. Number one, pageant girls are super catty, are super competitive backstage. So, so that's against the rules and you can't sit with us. Now, I would say yes and no. And before I get started, please remember I've only done one pageant. I can't speak for every pageant or every pageant contestant. This is not across the board. I'm only speaking from my personal experience. So the day of the pageant, I remember pulling up to the building, going inside and seeing some of the other contestants. Now there was a thing happening, a thing that I call sizing up. It's kind of where the other girls kind of fill you out. They kind of look you up and down. They're kind of trying to see if you are a contender or how big of a competitor that you're going to be. 
you got to remember this is a competition. People want to win. So it's not uncommon or unnatural that people want to know who their competition is. Take me, for example, someone very green and very inexperienced when it came to pageants. I really had, I probably had no business being there. So if a person is filling me out or another contestant is filling me out and they can notice how new and how green I am, they may think they have an advantage over me or they could be filling me out to see if I'm one of the new ones that kind of has natural talent that can come right in and just knock it out of the park. So I can't say that that is catty. Now you can put it in the competitive category, I guess. Now I will say when we went backstage, because in a pageant, of course, you know there are different segments. So you do have to change clothes in between takes. You do want to maybe do your hair differently. I remember them having us in a very small room, um, not enough outlets um, for people to plug up their hair curlers or flat irons or whatever you're using to change your look. And I do remember some girls kind of pushing, because we're all scrambling at this point, trying to be ready in time to get back out on stage. Now, I do remember some girls arguing over some outlets or they didn't have enough space to do their makeup, being kind of pushy. I remember just standing there. I couldn't even get to an outlet. I couldn't even really... All I could do was just kind of freshen up my makeup and we just had to go back out on stage. Now, I did kind of find that unfair to a certain extent. Um, I wasn't willing to force my way in. And I think, you know, the more experienced girls kind of knew what to do and kind of how to work it. The girls like me that didn't have a lot of experience. I mean, I was just kind of shocked. It was very chaotic. Now, I will say that there was a girl there who was kind of like that favorite to win someone that was very experienced. She had done the same pageant two times prior and she was winner up both times. She didn't win, but she was winner up. She kind of had a couple of diva moments and I remember her saying to all of us in the dressing room backstage, you know, she said, you know, I've done this twice. I've been winner up both times. This year, I'm taking it. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was like, this is not happening for real. This is the kind of stuff that I see on TV. But it was just that dramatic. And I remember at that point, the room kind of being kind of awkward, kind of tense. Kind of like, well, what do you want us to do? Should we just pack up and go home now? Should we just go ahead and hand you the crown? And I do remember um, she was backstage. She had on her evening gown and she was kind of practicing her walk. And someone slightly stepped on her, the train of her dress. And she turned around and she said, do not step on my dress. Now, after she said it, she quickly apologized and she kind of explained like, you know, I don't want it to rip. We do have to go back out on stage. You're a pageant girl. I'm a pageant girl. You know, I know you get it. But back to my point. Yes, sometimes backstage can be a little bit tense. Number two, pageant girls can have unhealthy eating habits. Wow, I was starving. So I'm going to say yes and no again. And I also want to say once again, I can't speak for, I'm not speaking for all pageants or all pageant girls. I'm only going to give you some examples from the actual pageant that I was in. So for the most part, I think people were generally healthy, but there was a few girls there um, that I encountered that did share their eating habits that did not sound very healthy. For example, there was one girl, um, she talked about the special K diet and during this time there was like a special K diet craze going on and she stated that she would eat one bowl of special K and one apple a day 30 days prior to the pageant. She said that that was all that she would consume and I just remember looking at her body and you know I don't know what her weight was prior to the day of the pageant. And I remember being very shocked and taken aback, but I didn't say anything. You know, I remember other girls being kind of quiet as well, but a few did chime in. And then, of course, others started to share their stories of how many calories they would consume and how much weight they were trying to lose. There was a lot of chatter about being in a calorie deficit or eating very minimal 
her day leading up to the pageant. I remember the girl that was the favorite to win. She said that she would do, I think, 60 days prior to the pageant, about two, sometimes three hours of cardio a day. And then for five days a week, she would lift weights twice a day. And I also remember, you know, throughout the day, because um, we were there for hours before the actual pageant event, you know, rehearsing, practicing, or whatnot. And they would give us food, you know, throughout the day, like little snacks and things to keep our energy up. A lot of the girls would not eat. Um, and you can say maybe, of course, before going on stage in a bathing suit, you don't want to look bloated. For me personally, I ate. I had to eat because... It was a long day and we had been there all day and I didn't want to be, you know, lightheaded on stage. Now, for me personally, I wasn't on any kind of special diet or any kind of restrictive diet. I tried to eat generally healthy, but I can tell being in crunch time, preparing days before a pageant, there were some girls that did take a more extreme approach. Number three. Pageant girls are not intelligent and rely solely off their looks. Maybe she's not such a dumb blonde after all. I can tell you now from my point of view that is completely false. The girls that I met in the pageant were some of the most articulate, intelligent, well-rounded individuals that I'd ever met. A lot of them had great things going for them prior to the pageant and went on to do wonderful things after the pageant. And last but not least, number four, pageantry can have long lasting negative effects such as self-esteem issues. Am I pretty? Yes and no. I think anytime you enter anything like a competition, especially a beauty competition where looks may be a factor or your attractiveness may be a factor, I think you really have to prepare for that mentally. You have to be mentally healthy before you even enter into something like that because if you're not, of course, being evaluated in such a way can lead to self-esteem issues or body image issues. Now, I do remember being backstage and girls making comments about them wishing that their thighs were smaller or their chest was bigger or doing certain techniques to make certain body parts appear bigger or smaller. Now, I do remember for the swimsuit competition, we had a pre-evaluation. So basically, before the competition, we put on our bathing suits and we all walked out on stage and they took us by groups and a man came out with a pen and paper and he kind of pre-evaluated our bodies. Now, I can tell you that was very awkward for me. I did not like that. I did not enjoy that. I remember questioning, why am I standing on stage in this bathing suit? Why is this even important? And I remember starting to question myself. And then even backstage, after the pre-evaluation, some of the girls who had initially appeared the most confident were starting to speak about their insecurities and second-guessing themselves as well because they were so worried about what their evaluation was. And now I'm going back to the girl that was the favorite to win, the one that had been a winner up two times prior. You may be wondering if she won this particular pageant. And the answer is no, she did not win. For a third time in a row, she was winner up. And I remember after they announced the winner, her coming backstage, eyes big and watery, her face red, her throwing her hands over her face, her saying, why did I not win? How is it that I'm winner up three times and I still did not win? I could just see the visible disappointment on her face and hear it in her voice. And I and others could tell that she had worked very, very hard to make it up to this point. But I do think it came down to entitlement and her being so fixated on winning that she didn't allow herself to enjoy the process. But back to the point, just depending on where you are at mentally, such rejection can be very heavy on someone. So now the controversies. So because of such stereotypes like these, pageants have been historically controversial. There have been many criticisms of pageants such as the objectification of women and that pageants reinforce ideologies that the value of women should be focused on their physical appearance 
which leads to women feeling the pressures to conform to unrealistic beauty standards and investing more into fashion, beauty and hair products, and cosmetic surgery. This led to many protests by feminists. In 1970, at the Miss World competition held in London, a group of women known as the Women's Liberation Movement protested by storming the stage. This pageant was won by Jennifer Hostin from Grenada, the first black woman from her country to win the title. There is also a movie based on this as well called Misbehavior. This leads to my next criticism, lack of diversity. For many of years, only white women won beauty pageants. It would be years before women of color would even be allowed to enter beauty pageants, let alone win them. After Jennifer Hostin, Vanessa Williams did go on to be the first black winner of the Miss America pageant in 1984. There also went on to be other winners of color in their race as well. For example, Lapita Jones was the first Mexican to win Miss Universe. Because of these diversity issues, many minority groups held their own individual pageants to provide more opportunities. For example, the Miss India USA pageant focuses on Indian history and Howard University hosts the Miss Howard University competition, which emphasizes black beauty and focuses on the winner being viewed as an ideal model for a community leader. There is also a focus on cultivating traits such as poise and confidence and community service. So in conclusion, where do we stand with pageants now? Now with all of the controversies, criticisms, pageants have now evolved and expanded their focus to not just physical beauty, but inner beauty, personality, intelligence, talent, service, and character. So pageants are now more diverse that way, but I do think due to the history of how pageants were formed and the vanity associated with it, I do think people still have some reservations about them. Some people question why there is still a swimsuit category. Now, some pageants no longer have a swimsuit competition and some pageants have taken it away and then since brought it back. However, it is still a very hot topic when it comes to pageants. Now, I personally think they could swap out the bathing suit for a fitness outfit or just take it out altogether. Now, although for me, I left the pageant with confidence and a sense of self-accomplishment, I don't think I needed to be in a bathing suit to do that. But it was a very courageous moment for me to be on stage facing hundreds of people. It did help me conquer my fear and I felt powerful afterwards. I think you have to ask, what is your why? Why do you want to do a pageant and what is in it for you? And what can you do with the opportunity if you decide to do it? Sometimes your purpose is bigger than the platform. Sometimes you have to take something that may be perceived as negative and turn it into a positive. It all just depends. I think the biggest takeaway from all of this, as cliche as it sounds, is inner beauty. Are you defining your own beauty? What does beauty mean to you? Is it an outward appearance? Is it social media validation? Is it how you treat people or is it a combination of things? At the end of the day, you have to define it for yourself. You have to know your own value and you cannot place your value into the hands of a trophy, a competition, an app on a phone, and especially other people. And as far as competition is concerned, we're really only in competition with ourselves. I mean, going back to the Snow White reference with the evil stepmother asking who is the fairest of them all, we were programmed as little kids to be competitive with others and to place a high value on beauty. But we all know we can't wait for a magic mirror to validate us and there's not always going to be someone there waiting to crown us. Everyday beauty standards change and a lot of them are not even real. So what standard are we really holding ourselves against? We have to remember to be gentle with ourselves. Perhaps the beauty pageant that we need to attend is not the seasonal one in which we stand on stage waiting for an applause from others but the daily one in which we learn to celebrate, appreciate, and applaud 
ourselves. Well, that's all we have for today. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.